attention to the following point. At a definite moment your working tubes will get too short. Try your best to lengthen them very neatly to make joints as invisible as possible if necessary. In case you've got a high form and you are going to continue weaving upward. In my case I'm planning to include only a narrow fragment of this pattern, 5-6 cm wide. In case my pattern was horizontal it would be equivalent to 10-12 rows. The length of my tubes is quite sufficient for a fragment like this. Look, here is the last row, I've attached it to the pole. Let's count starting from this very pole. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here is the tenth pole. Here I've got two extremely short tube ends left. It is very opportunely. I lead the tube end over the 11th pole and the 12th one. I don't lengthen the tubes. They are seen at both ends, where you start rolling a tube and where you finish. That's all. I finish the whole pattern with a single tube. It is the entire height of the pattern which is about 5-6 cm high. The following rows will be complete. Look, according to my pattern, here go two yellow tubes again. And you can either count or stop without counting. One, two, Three. Please note that I always weave with moist tubes. Moreover, by the moment I finish weaving with these tubes, the previous ones will still be wet enough. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, take a look once again please, 11, it's time to stop here, and 12. That's all, I've stopped. There are supposed to be two tube tails behind each pole, the tube start point and end point. Look, here is the start point of the tube, here is the end point of the previous one, and here is the start point of the next tube. Here is the end point, the next tube is going to reach here. According to my pattern, I'm supposed to involve two brown tubes next. So I take two brown tubes, unite them, put a loop onto a pole and make sure once again that I weave the whole pattern with one tube. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Look, here is the tail of the previous tube, here is the current one. Here are my tails, they are going to stick out like this so far. All the following rows will be woven up to the end, hugging 12 poles each. Let's continue. Attach tubes and hug 12 poles with each. So, please take a look. I've woven three pattern repeats already. There are two tails sticking out from behind of each pole. Now we are getting back to where we started the pattern. Here is the last pole I can put a loop on freely. 
According to my pattern, it is high time for light yellow tubes. So let's repeat the pattern once again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Now we've woven the whole pattern. There is only one last brown tube left. You can bend the tube tails aside. Now it is high time to insert a brown tube instead of this auxiliary green one. I've taken the green tube out. Now I'm going to insert a brown one behind this yellow tube. You can either do it with the help of a knitting needle or without it. You can just bend the tubes aside. That's all. The tube is where it is supposed to be. And lead it over 12 poles in the same very way. As a result, you will get 11 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. That's all. Now the only scene left is to finish our pattern. We've already lifted all the tubes. Look, start distrib distributing the tubes very carefully. I need the lowest tubes, here they are. I take them and continue. Now they can be laid comfortably. I continue weaving with these tubes. Moreover, with each pair of tubes, there will be less and less of the pattern left to be woven. Last time I had to hug 12 poles. My current yellow tubes have already hugged 2 poles, including the one they were attached to, so I have to hug 10 poles with them. Even without counting, I see that the previous tube was led around this pole. Look, the brown tube sticks from behind of this pole, so the yellow one has to stick out from the behind of this one. So I lead the tube tail here and that's it. Get back to the sticking tubes again, distribute them very carefully. Even if you cannot tell which ones are lower and which ones are higher, you've got the pattern scheme to look at and see that the pattern repeat starts with two rows of yellow tubes. Here they are. Continue weaving. Just out of curiosity, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here is the last pole I have led the previous tube around. Now this pole is supposed to be the last one. 9. You see, the first two rows are two poles shorter. Continue. According to the pattern, now it's time for a row consisting of two contrast tubes. Yellow and brown. It is rather inconvenient, but with each following row the process is becoming easier. Continue. This row is going to be one pole shorter as well. As a result, when we finish, there will be two tails sticking out from behind of each pole. Let's take the next pair of tubes. 
Please try your best to be very attentive. You don't take these tubes, but the lowest ones instead. These tubes are higher, you can bend them away and take a look. We weave all of these tails up to the very end. So I woven the whole pattern up to the end. The fragment is about 5 cm high. Now I have to trim it. I'm going to cut all the sticking tails afterwards, after I finish weaving the casket. Since I framed the pattern with a 3-tube rope from beneath, now I'm going to frame it with a 3-tube rope from above as well. For this purpose, first of all I'm gluing each tail with normal school glue. I can glue one or a couple of tails at a time, no matter. The main task is to glue the top ones. The lower tails are pressed with the upper ones anyway. Let me explain what I mean. This tail, for example, is already pressed with an upper tube. When I frame it with a 3-tube rope, it will get fixed still tighter and will hardly ever slide out. Moreover, it will get fastened with an upper tail again. That's why you just fix the upper tubes with some glue. As you see here, I've dropped some glue and there. And what is very important, we are going to start weaving a 3-tube rope before the glue gets dry, and this way fix the tubes especially tightly. So I've dropped glue wherever needed. Now it's time to start weaving a 3-tube rope. i finished the lower 3-tube rope here, it is where I'm going to start the upper one. I've already shown the way I apply 3-tube rope to covers in my second book. Now let me show you the way I do in case of volumetric items. I hug a pole with a 2-tube loop and attach one more additional tube here as well. So I've got 3 tubes. Press each tail very tightly. Make sure all the tails stick out toward outside. Help yourself with your fingers. This way. And continue like this, pressing tightly both to the item being woven and to the base. So I finished weaving a 3-tube rope and passed on to a 2-tube rope. I'm going to weave a row in 2-tube rope technique, then weave a fishbone pattern again, in order to make the top segment symmetrical to the bottom one. After I finish weaving the item, I'm going to cut the tails. By this moment they will both get fastened and dry. Try your best to cut the tails as short as you can. What to pay attention to? Since the tails are presented by tube beginnings and ends, they are softer than tube central parts, so they will be almost invisible. Even if in your case the tube tails end with central tube parts, it's no problem, no one is going to overturn your casket in search of drawbacks. Take a look at this item, for example. Sure, if you overturn it, you can see some stubs. Where the part they are invisible. In most parts they are hidden very carefully. What else? Here is another casket woven in layer-wise rope technique. I've experimented with it. Take a thorough look at the pattern. At first it rises, then it is horizontal and then rises again. Or it's better to follow the red line. 
which is rising for a while, then goes horizontally, then follows the rise again, and so on. How have I done it like this? The pattern repeat consists of nine poles here as well. Here at the bottom it is clearly seen. Take a look at the green stripe, please. The green tube is put onto this pole. There are no additional tubes put onto the following three poles. I woven a normal horizontal rope round four poles. After which I have started adding the tubes. Let's take a look. Here is a green loop hugging the pole. Next to it there is a yellow loop round the pole. Let's start counting from the yellow tube. One, the yellow tube on the following pole two, the red one three, yellow four, yellow five. Five tubes in a row hugging each pole. Then follow three poles with no tubes added. And the ninth pole with a green tube put onto it. Let me repeat once again. I've woven four horizontal stitches with this green tube. After which follows a rise for the next five poles with five additional tubes put onto them. Then follows one more horizontal segment and an inclined one again. Well, I've just uh, experimented with this wave-like pattern as an option. What else? If you weave zigzag-like, you will get an open work pattern. And one more point to pay attention to. While weaving a zigzag, when you turn don't hug a pole with two tubes at a time and don't make a turn at the front side like this. Instead you have to lead one tube from behind and then lead this one from behind as well. You can turn this way and continue weaving in the opposite direction. At Stranomaster O website you can see two items I have woven using this technique. Unfortunately I don't have any zigzag pattern works available to show you right now. A zigzag pattern requires a bigger form, a higher and a wider one. And I recommend you add an, a tube to every other pole, not every pole. Thank you. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to contact me, I will be glad to answer. All the best to you, good luck!